Welcome to this week's episode of the Inside Kingston podcast, where experienced professionals, entrepreneurs, and community leaders based in Kingston-upon-Thames are invited on to share their story with us. I'm your host, Amir Rochalima. This week's episode of the Inside Kingston podcast is brought to you by Holland Hahn & Wills, a financial planning and wealth management firm based in Kingston-upon-Thames. Holland Hahn & Wills specialises in retirement planning for senior professionals and successful business owners. Visit hhw-uk.com to start feeling more relaxed and confident about your financial future. Thank you for joining us for another episode of the Inside Kingston podcast. I'm joined today by Andrea Ockus. Andrea is a registered nutritional therapist and the founder of Whole Harmony Wellbeing Centre offering a range of treatments and therapies designed to promote better health and well-being for their clients. What's unique about Andrea is how she brought together the knowledge and experience of a team of specialists in alternative medicines to create her own business. And be sure to listen to the end, where Andrea shares with us how she herself moved away from a stressful corporate career once she discovered the benefits that functional medicine and holistic treatments had in her own life. So whether you're interested in knowing more about the world of alternative medicines and well-being treatments, or would like to know more about what it takes to run a successful independent business, then I hope you enjoy this episode of the Inside Kingston podcast. Welcome, Andrea Ockus, to the Inside Kingston podcast. Andrea, I'm really excited about this conversation because... I think over these last 12 to 15 months that we've been in and out of these lockdowns due to the COVID pandemic, I think people have had and have found the need to pause and to take some time to maybe reconnect with themselves, look after their own mental health, their own well-being. And I think that our listeners can learn a lot from your experience in this area. But um, to kick off this conversation, I'd like to go back in time, if that's okay. So, Andrea, where did you grow up? Yeah, good morning, Amir. Thank you so much for inviting me. Yeah, you are really, really very right about uh, people kind of stopping and thinking about their health again. But as you asked me, let me go back uh, a little bit at my background. So I'm originally Hungarian, but um, my story is uh, quite long on where I where I lived through my lifetime. Well, actually, um, I was born in a family with a bigger sister, a very loving family. But um, my sister really knew what she wanted to do in her life. Uh, she was preparing to be a medical doctor. But myself, I, I was very undetermined what I would like to do in my life. I like to study. I like to go out with friends. But I didn't have anything in mind what I wanted to do. However, my dad, actually, he was very determined and um, he told me that if I follow a career, uh, go, go to college, um, get, a, get a job um, and have, have a good job with the financial security, then that's going to be for life and uh, I'm going to have enough money to live a comfortable life and, and raise my family. So as I didn't know any better, I followed his advice. And uh, actually, I went to a, a very prestigious university in Hungary, uh, the University of Economics, and I graduated in, in fine, uh, with a finance degree. So long, long story short, after a few years, I ended up actually in California. And first, I went uh, just to improve my English, but I ended up um, actually living there for 12 years. So later, I also got a master in accounting and I became a professional accountant. I got married. I had my son there. But actually, what happened, and I think it happens to many people who work in corporate and corporate world, that I was starting to get burned out. In addition, um, back when I was about 14 years old, I became, um, I had a very severe, I started to have a very severe skin condition. And during this time when I started my career and I had a very busy lifestyle, I had stressful 
uh, client deadlines. I was sitting a lot and wasn't eating the best food. This severe skin condition broke out again. And it it wasn't easy. And I was working like 80 hours um, and I wasn't healthy. So I decided to start to look for another job. And actually, I started to work for a major oil company, which uh, I worked for actually for 13 years. And it was much, much, much better. And I enjoyed, I enjoyed my job. I worked less hours, but I was still far away from, from my parents, from my, from my sister. And by then my son was born. So I wanted to come back to Europe. So we moved first to Scotland and later into London through, through this job I had. But with the big move, with all the stress that caused, actually my skin broke out again. So that's the point when I decided, okay, I need to really look into this. It's not enough to just put some steroid creams on it. I need to find the natural solution to feel better, not to happen this all the time again. And, and actually with the skin condition, if somebody has that, you know, your self-esteem is lower, um, can't go all out all the time. It, it doesn't look nice. You need to cover your skin up. So what I'd done at that point, um, I looked into some natural ways. Um, I detoxified my body. I changed some diet and, and lifestyle. Uh, I, I changed my diet and I done some lifestyle changes. And actually, within two months, my skin totally cleared. It was unbelievable. Wow. And but I had a side a, a, a side effect, which at that point it wasn't in my goals, but actually my weight started to melt away as well. Obviously, sitting so much and having a stressful workload, um, I, I put on quite a lot of weight. So when I went back to work, I, I took a, a, a week off or something to, to start this on this uh, journey. So I went back to work and everybody was asking, oh, what did you do, Andrea? You look so amazing. And so it's unbelievable already within a week they could see a change in me. But as I mentioned, to clear my skin totally, it took me about two months. But by then, I was so excited about what it done to me. It's not just my skin, my weight, but also my self-esteem, my mood. Everything just changed. I, I felt like a person 10 years younger. I felt like I had new goals again. And I was so motivated. And I decided I need to get on this journey. I need to have other people achieve the same results. At that point, I didn't know exactly how I'm going to do it. But I started to do some courses. Obviously, I was still working full time. So, so basically, I, the, my first uh, courses I done were in some coaching. And actually, because one of, one of the modalities that really helped me with detoxification was colonic hydrotherapy. That was another course I done, and I'm not sure if um, probably most of our listeners don't know what colonic hydrotherapy is, but um, yeah, so I, I became a colonic hydrotherapist, and when I I graduated, I decided I can start working, although still keeping my full time job. Mm -hmm. So that was years back, but basically. Um, I started to see clients part-time at night and weekends. And soon I started to be really busy. But I wasn't really happy with the place I was working from because uh, it was quite small. It, it, I couldn't see as many clients as I wanted. So I started to look around. And actually that is when... Um, that is when the idea of a center was born. You know, if, if you don't know colonic hydrotherapy, you really need to have a room and uh, a toilet quite close. So when I was looking for another place to practice from, I couldn't find anything suitable. So I decided, okay, I'm going to create one. I'm going to create the one place I would like to work from. 
in the same time, through the years that I started to work as a colonic hydrotherapist, um, one of my clients brought to my attention functional medicine. And again, functional medicine is not very known yet in UK. It's very, very known in, in the States. So to explain a little bit what functional medicine is, um, if you see a functional medicine practitioner, you can be asked to complete a lot of questionnaires in advance. You can ask a lot of questions about your physical health, mental health, emotional health, even your goals, your relationship, everything, because it's everything important when we look at the whole person. And all these events in life are going to be plotted on a timeline. We call it timeline. So basically, everything happened to you from the time, actually, even from the before the time you were born, how your mother diet was, how stressed she was, and all the way through your childhood, whether you were a colicky baby, whether you were breastfed, whether you had acne or um ear infections, what happened to your teenage years, college, or when you started to work, if there were any traumas in your life. And when you think about trauma, obviously it can be something very major to lose a parent, for example, but some traumas might be more like how we perceive things in life. And then a very little event can become a trauma to a person. And then also, in this, it, it, in this timeline, we're going to plot all the symptoms through your lifetime, obviously, mostly what you remember, but it's very important to look at when things happened in your life and when the symptoms followed. And when you, can, when you look at this, a lot of things you realize how it makes sense that symptoms came because of some events in your life. Mm. And then... Basically, the goal in functional medicine is to find the root cause of your symptoms. So basically, when we talk about the skin condition, like I used to have, and um, you know, maybe Amir, you might have a skin condition, but it doesn't mean that the root cause of the same problem is similar. We might have a totally root cause in our bodies. And that's why through functional medicine, we never approach two people in a similar way. We can look into, okay, what happened in their life, what their root causes are, and we start there. We start basically from the root causes and like an onion, we peel layer by layer while looking at how to heal these this symptoms. And when you look at that, everybody basically is their own healer. As I mentioned, um, our total health, it doesn't only depend on diet or exercise, which most of us think these two are important, but it's gonna also depend on what relationship we have, whether we like our job, whether we have some purpose in life, whether we have some goals we would like to accomplish. Everything together is gonna give us our overall health. So basically, back to when I was looking for a place to, to set up my new business, um, I decided that I want to make it as a functional medicine practice. And as a functional medicine practitioner, when you look at the person as a whole, you're going to realize that, yeah, you can work in certain areas, but you're not going to be able to cover everything. Like, for example, if somebody has stress, big stress in their lives, then we're going to look into, okay, what exactly is for that person is suitable? Yeah, some people are going to do counseling, but see, some people want to do cranial sexual therapy or shiatsu massage to relieve their stress. Or for example, if somebody is not detoxifying properly, um, their det detox pathways are, are blocked, then we're going to look into, okay, well, maybe that person needs colonic hydrotherapy or maybe a lymphatic drainage massage. Obviously, one person can't do all these modalities. So when I was looking for a property, a commercial property, I found the one in, in Hampton Vic High Street. So we are on 47 Hampton Vic, um, High Street on Hampton Vic. And although the building was a little bit larger than I imagined first, but it was perfect. I, I fall in love with it right away. And um, 
actually, I'm very lucky because um, my partner works in construction. So the two of us together, we kind of um, designed what what this center should look like. And uh, when we look ahead of time now, and um, currently we have four rooms and we operate with about 15 different practitioners. And um, if you would like to go to our website, you're gonna find um, something about every um, modality that we practice. Some of uh, it might, you, you might have heard of, like acupuncture, where I mentioned cranial sacral therapy, shiatsu, colonics, um, counseling, coaching, drama therapy, obviously functional medicine, and uh, nutritional therapy. So you can go on, on the website and, and check out. And if you don't find something that you heard of, then just contact me because uh, you might have something coming down the line, right? Yeah. We can yeah. find a practitioner yeah. um, on that particular modality. It's really interesting you mentioned that, Andrea. And I appreciate you sharing not only your backstory, but also a little bit more about your business today. Um, and I really think it's interesting that you mentioned around the functional medicine side of things in particular, how to continue on your example, a skin condition might have its root cause, not just on something that one might think is obvious, like maybe one's diet or one's exercise routine or lack of, but also it might have its root cause on a bunch of other things that are going on in that person's life. And you know, what's interesting about that is I deal in financial planning, a field that has nothing to do with yours. I specialize in retirement planning, people coming up to that transition of wanting to start a new chapter of their life. And I tend to say to folks, um, it's not all about the money. You know, you need to have enough money to be able to sleep well at night, but you need to have enough purpose to want to wake up in the morning because this new chapter of your life, it requires you to be thinking and doing things that will write this next chapter of your life. And I think it's so interesting how I've had now so many varied guests on this podcast and in every single different profession and professionals that I've spoken with, there's, there's always more than just the thing that might seem obvious. I think that's really, really interesting. And I'd like to pick your brains on that a little bit further because I'm guessing that because of the nature of your work, you have had to pause some of your work throughout lockdown. Andrea, how have the conversations with your clients, with your prospective clients felt post lockdown when you've been able to come back to work as you were before? I'm guessing, and please correct me if I'm wrong, that you're finding more and more people finding these reasons inside them that perhaps they just ignored in the past with the commuting and the work and everything else. Would that be right? Yeah, definitely. And back to the lockdown, um, in the first lockdown, we were totally closed. In the second lockdown, actually, government realized that some of the modalities we perform are actually medical. It's not part of NHS, but still being able to still practice those modalities um, give the opportunity for some people not to overbore, overburn NHS, but kind of go ahead and and um, you know, like for example, colonic hydrotherapy, we were able to do that because if somebody really suffers with constipation, they can end up with NHS and they, we could uh, prevent that. So, so through, through this process, through the first lockdown, second lockdown, coming back from April fully, what I see is people are looking for, for answers. So they, they posed, a lot of people were from home, which had their positives and negatives. Probably they didn't commute as much, so they were able to spend more time maybe with family. But in the same time, their routine changed, their diet changed, how much they would move. And even we don't realize when we commute, we, we walk 10 minutes to the train station, 10 minutes on the other side, and it adds up. But just working from home, even that was missing. So a lot of people started to gain weight and were eating differently. But even the social life that an office environment gives, that was missing. 
not even talking about the social life with friends and family. So that affected people emotionally, affected people's mental health. And we see all these people now wanting to make changes, wanting to get back to their old life, but in a different way, in a better way, prevent these things happening again. So you are very right. I see a lot of people kind of prioritizing us because it's never about the money, right? Because when a new phone comes out, everybody is running to buy it. So it's never about the money. We all have enough money to do what our highest goal requires. So it's about our priority, what we're going to put as the first priority. If our health is our first priority, then money doesn't matter. <laughs> I remember when I was working about probably two years down in the professional accounting environment and my team for all my life, that was the worst breakout. And I remember I was sitting in the living room after a long day at work and my, my skin was burning and I was in very bad mood. If you have walked into my living room and said, I have a solution, it costs $5,000 because I was living in America at that time, I would have not sold for a second to put down that money. Even if I didn't have it, I would have got it in credit because at that point, Nothing else worked in my life because my house was in jeopardy. And another thought I have as well, that's why when we look at when you look at our modalities, obviously some of our, um, the physical level, some are relating to stress, but we also have um, transformational coach. And why is that important? Because again, if you look at what makes a person healthy and happy it's our purpose in life and many times we are so scared to get out of our comfort zone so scared to leave our job or do something different and if i i didn't have to do my coaching i don't know about because i'm also a coach and usually they say every coach has a coach so i done a few years back a very very structured half a year coaching um, journey with somebody, if I hadn't done that, I don't think the whole whole, um, the whole Harmony Wellbeing Center would have been born mm. because mm. I had a secure job. I was making very good money. I worked at a major oil company. I knew what I was doing. I, I wasn't, I was comfortable every day in my job. Um, yeah, I had a long commute, but I had nice co-workers, so I could have just stayed in that. But I had this goal, I had this goal, I had this vision that I could make a real difference with my knowledge and every day I was building up my knowledge. And it just couldn't let me sleep. I, I had to get out of my comfort zone. I had to look for answers, how I can establish this, this place that I have in my mind. So, again, I would have not been able to be happy if I don't fulfill my purpose. Yeah, yeah that's... I don't know, did I answer your question? No, that's super, <laughs> that's super, and I appreciate you sharing that. Andrea, given your sort of career uh, experience in the professional corporate world, and of course your interest and vast experience in the, the, the general well-being arena that makes up uh, our ability to, to uh, I guess, feel better and be better in and of ourselves. What are some of the key business lessons that you've learned throughout your life? Yeah, so um, actually, well, both business and personal lessons, because, again, when we think about what the root cause is, on, on our health and our well-being and our happiness. Um, it goes back to stress. So if you if you think back to the caveman, it seems like very long time ago, but physiologically the human body didn't change as much. And so when we think back to the we imagine their lives, 
they would um, try to get food. In that process, uh, they might have encountered uh, uh, a tiger and they would run for their lives. And in that process, what, impo- what was important for the body is to be lighter so you can run. The body didn't want to digest their food because it's like, well, if I'm dying in an hour, why, what, why is it important to digest my food and have minerals and vitamins? Um, the hormones were shut down because, okay, again, if I die in an hour, why is it important to make babies? So all that changed the body. And we call that the sympathetic nervous system mode when our heart rate is faster, um, our blood is, doesn't flow so well because if we, we are bitten, then it's not, we're not going to um, bleed out. Yeah, I, I think everybody knows that feeling when, when there is a, a stressful situation and all the whole body adrenaline runs into our blood. And um, so that's the sympathetic nervous system mode. The parasympathetic nervous system mode is when we feel relaxed, um, we are out with our friends or our loved one, you know, we have our children and, and we take care of that. Then, and we are designed to be in this state most of our time. And, you know, obviously when you step off uh, the curve and you didn't observe that the car is coming and you kind of jump back, we need to have that reaction. So it's very important to have that um, protective sympathetic nervous system mode. However, nowadays, most of the people are more in that sympathetic nervous system mode. And we are surprised why, why we are constipated, why we can't make babies when we want to, why we have mental health problems. And it's not a surprise. It's it's just a normal reaction to our body when we are in the sympathetic nervous system mode. So when we are stressed, it is normal to have all these symptoms. It's n- it don't ask, oh, what's wrong with me? Nothing wrong with you. It's perfectly normal, perfectly fine. Your body is protecting you. So I guess I have the answer there. <laughs> The root cause of everything, because as I said, it's like um, layers of onions. We, we go back and, you know, probably we might find, you know, we can find parasites, we can find uh, infections, we can find things. But then we peel everything back on the bottom of it, it's lay stress. The so stress is basically the cause of everything. And. Yeah, it would be easy if we if we know this answer and we know how to deal with that right yeah. but um i guess that's that's where where we come in to find out how how we can um deal with your stress that can be physical mental emotional it can be actually inside biochemical as i mentioned parasite that's the stress for the body so um so the lesson is that you know we need to stop stressing somehow we need to learn because we're not gonna able to to move on an island and leave our jobs and be all kind of happy without any worries we need to somehow learn how to deal with stress and it's different for everybody we need to find and that's actually functional medicine we find what is the best for the individual we don't have two similar people, it's a sample of one. And that's why the program you go through is never gonna be two people on the same journey. Yeah. Because we need to find what exactly works for you. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense, it really does. Andrea, when when you look back at your career journey to date, what are you most proud of? Yeah, actually, Actually, what is the most proud at this moment is um, all the practitioners. Somehow I was able to um, recruit or I was able to attract into our center because it's really important um, to work with people who are very much like-minded. 
So I feel all our team, um, we have what we have with, with two different modalities, but what we have in common is everybody is very professional. All of us love what we do. <laughs> we are very passionate about it, and that's going to come true when you work with us. And our goal is to help you. Actually, the best word to express who we are, we are your guide. Because only you can heal yourself. Only you can find your solution. Only you know your body best. You know what makes you happy. We are going to be there just to guide, depending on your preference, what modality you choose, or maybe you, you choose different ones at the same time. But we are going to bring out your solution from yourself, from inside, and guide you with our extra knowledge. But we're never going to tell you that that's what you need to do. We, you're going to tell us what you're comfortable with. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think most proud is is my team. I'm of my team, who, who people who work with with me and at the whole Harmony Wellbeing Center. That's very cool. And what next for you and your business? Are there any projects in the pipeline that you can tell us about? Yeah, actually, um, obviously, coming back from a few lockdowns and um, we started our, our uh, clinic right before the first lockdown. So it was quite challenging start. But at the moment, um, our, our biggest goal is to, to make our clinic aware in the community. Because I think you mentioned before we started today that a lot of people were used to go to work in central London and maybe um, they went to an acupuncturist there or they done a massage in lunchtime. And I understand, although some people are going to go back to office, I don't think it's going to ever be full time again. A lot of people are going to work from home. And isn't it ni the nicest thing that just two minutes from where you live or maybe five minutes or 10 minutes drive in your lunchtime, you can go and have something relaxing or after work. So I think um, because we kind of started um, our, our clinic uh, not on the best timing, our, our biggest goal at the moment is to make sure people are aware what we do. People are aware about what modalities we offer and what those modalities can help with. And actually, individually, my biggest goal is to try to educate people on what functional medicine is. And we can call it different. We can call it integrative medicine. We can call it root cause analysis. It doesn't matter what we call it. But actually, the essence of it, I want to educate people on how we find the root cause and why it's important to find the root cause mm -hmm. to really get rid of, I didn't mention, but my skin condition never came back again. And yeah, I'm never going to say I don't have eczema again because medically it's, it's not treatable, but it's good enough that it's not outbroken. And I know even if it shows a little bit of sign that might come along, I know what to do about it. And yeah, that's that's um, that's our project to to put out the word out there. And um, what I want to mention, obviously, if you don't know all these modalities or you don't know exactly what's the best for you, what I offer is a free free 30 minutes call with me. You can book it on the website or you know you can call us or email. Um, and this three in this, this 30 minutes, it, it's totally free. We would go through what your symptoms are, what your concerns are, what ultimately your goal is, and just talk a little bit with you to learn about you, to learn what you're comfortable with, because um, many of us could help with the same symptoms, it's just in a different way. So we want to find what is most comfortable for you to go to, what your beliefs are, because interestingly, um, yeah, and I'm going to say something that not might not everybody believe in, but I really believe if you if you do anything, even if you go to your GP, 
Nothing is going to work if you don't believe in it. And that's the placebo effect. And I recently read about this, that, um, you know, just go into your GP and that person in the white coat is going to tell you something. And because you believe in it, it might not be the best medication for you that you're going to take, but it's going to help because of your belief. And it's same here. If I'm going to tell you that, well, yeah, based on your symptoms, you really need a colonics. But if you don't believe in it, it's not going to work. Or if you don't believe that acupuncture is going to help you, it's not going to work. So that's why we need to have those conversations to see what, what your beliefs are, what your belief system is, and what you are comfortable with doing. And that's how I can advise you who, you know, who the best to book an appointment with. Yeah, no, that's great stuff. And it sounds like it's exciting times ahead for you guys too. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Very good. As we start to wrap up, I'd like to ask you a few quick fire questions that our listeners are always interested in. So, Andrea, what do you do to relax outside of the office? Yeah, actually, um, if if I have, well, obviously now with the travel restrictions, this is like almost like a dream. But if I'm able to take a couple of weeks off, I love to go to, to retreats. And um, I went a few a few places in Portugal and Malta. Actually, there are some very good ones in UK as well. And and that I love to do that because uh, it's not just the food or the, the juicing or the treatments you get, but also the like-minded people. And and it really recharges me and and brings me back to my beliefs because obviously. Um, even us who are in this profession, we get stressed and we get busy and we have our own life with our kids and everything around. So we need to recharge and go back to our roots and go back to what our beliefs are. Uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, um, what I do to relax is um, I have a 12-year-old, almost 13-year-old son. So I, I love to be with him, we cycle. Um, he goes through a lot of changes, obviously, at this age. So it's quite uh, fun to put it <laughs> put it in a uh, in a fun way, right? To uh, to to have a teenage boy. So um, yeah, that we try to do things together until he still wants to do things with me. <laughs> oh, that's lovely! Absolutely, I'm also taking every opportunity I can to do things together with my children. Because as with you, I'm acutely aware that. At one point, you know, uh, they'll probably have other interests rather than their parents. So there we go. Um, I know. <laughs> Andrea, are there any books that you've recently read that you would recommend to our listeners? You know, I, I read a lot of books. <laughs> but um, when I think about what would be the most appropriate to, to recommend here after talking about... Um, you know, goals, health goals or or purpose in life. I really like Wayne Dyer's books. And um, so, for example, one of them is Secrets to Manifesting Your Destiny. So actually what this book does, it teaches you how to overcome your conditioning. You know, how I was talking about getting out of your comfort zone. And it grants you permission to believe that you can achieve anything you desire, if you wanted it hard enough. Maybe that's a goal to lose some weight. Maybe that's a goal to feel energetic. Maybe it's a goal to, to have a baby. Or maybe it's something totally different to, to, take, to have a job that you always wished for or uh, a business. It doesn't matter what goal you have you need to get over that hurdle when you believe you can do it, right? Because we all had this conditioning through our childhoods that, oh, be careful, don't step off the road, it's dangerous. Oh, be careful, don't go there because it might something happen. So we have all this conditioning that, well, I shouldn't do anything because it's risky, it's dangerous. I'm going to lose my job. I'm going to lose my financial security. I'm not going to be able to retire <laughs> to go back to your um, business. So a book like this maybe gives you a little bit of inspiration how 
you know, we all we all can achieve whatever we want, and we have one life, so don't waste it. Absolutely, just go for your dreams. That's a great recommendation, and I'm with you, Andrea. And I've got a saying that I like around this, which is, "Life isn't a rehearsal." And I think in that very short sentence, life isn't a rehearsal. There's a lot of information there. And I think a book like you referred there might help people unpack some of the information that's in a very simple sentence like that. So I appreciate your 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 recommendation there. Are there any movies or TV shows that you've recently watched that you'd recommend to our listeners? Yeah, actually, um, back to spending time with my son, um, we found this uh, American series. It's called Modern Family. And it's it's very sad. I don't know if you heard of it. It's very silly. And um, actually, what we like with my son, we sit down and we just sit and laugh. And and actually, it's laughter is one of the best medicine. Because think about it. Can you be depressed and laughing in the same time? No, not really. So um, yeah, find some find the comedy. Find something that um, you enjoy. Um, actually, I heard that even they are laugh- laughing therapies now. <laughs> so we don't have a practitioner doing that yet, but you know, just laugh and, and enjoy yourself, enjoy your life and enjoy being alive. And, you know, even if you have hard times with the pandemic, um, yeah, close down the TV. Don't listen to all, all the, the news. It's just so depressing. Just try to contribute to what you can and be positive and you know, we're going to get through this, like, hopefully, through generations, they got over many things, humanity, right? So, um, yeah, I'm not saying ignore it. I'm just saying, try to be positive and and contribute in the positive way to our hard times. I like that a lot. And finally, where can people go to find out more about you and your business? So, as I mentioned, you can call us, uh, email me. We have links to book appointments right away on the, on the website. So if you know what you would like to book, just book it directly. Or if you don't know, book the free call with me and we can discuss. Um, I guess the hardest is uh, to just pop in because we work by appointment. And so most, most of us are with clients. But um, yeah, if you schedule uh, something to just book, just Uh, come in and look around we Mm -hmm. can arrange that as well and for the benefit of our listeners i'll make sure that i add that link to the show notes andrea thank you for joining us here on the inside kingston podcast it's been a pleasure getting to know your story yes thank you so much amir for inviting me again that wraps up another episode of the inside kingston podcast make sure to check out our guests website pay them a visit and help spread the word about what they're doing If you have any questions or know someone who should be a guest on the show, please feel free to get in touch. I would also love it if you could go to iTunes and leave us a review and a five-star rating. We work hard to bring on some great guests and getting a review from you is one way to help the podcast rate well on iTunes so that others can find and enjoy the show too. Thanks for listening.